Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to a Shadow Priest Julian Guide. Today we're outside Ogrima. We are going to be going through talents, tips and tricks, rotations, fate casting, how to win jewels versus certain classes, what talents to spec versus certain classes, melee range. We're going to be going through it all. I will also be going over my macros that I use at the end of this video. I get a lot of questions about macros and honestly, I don't really use that many macros, but I still get questions about it because it looks like I use like a million macros on my bars, but I only use about six or seven. So I'll post the macros at the end of this video. Video, and I will try and post them down in the comment section below. Anyway, let's get into this. For the tier 15 row, you've got Fortress of Mind, Shadow Insight, and Shadow Avoid. You're pretty much always going to be wanting to take Shadow Insight, especially when you're dueling. I know that in PvE situations, a lot of people take Shadow Avoid. I even take Shadow Avoid when I'm doing raiding and dungeons and that. But honestly, guys, when you're doing PvP, you really need that Shadow Insight. It basically just gives you a lot more freedom to move about. I got a comment today saying, How is he mind blasting while moving? This is why you have to play Shadow insight. So your Shadow Word Pain deals damage. It has a chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Mind Blast and make it an instant cast. Having this talent gives you so much more mobility to be able to be moving and damaging. It works really, really well with your Void Form and your Void Bolts. You might think, you know, having a melee on you, they're stuck to you. Like you can't move. You can't really do much when they're on you. But if you're moving constantly and you're jumping about, you're casting Void Bolts, you're casting Mind Blasts, you're jumping off like little ledges, there is going to be some split moments where he can't actually hit you. So he's not going to have a 100% full uptime on you. He's going to be like going in and out of range quite often, especially when you're jumping off ledges and pressing levitate and things. So just because you're drilling melee, don't just stand there and take it. Make his life hard by moving about. I know for a fact they hate it when you move about. It would be so much easier for them if you could just stand still. I have seen some Shadow Priests out here when they're drilling melee, they don't really move about as much as they should be. And positioning is everything. Positioning is key to winning duels sometimes, especially outside Ogrima with the ledges. Use the map, use the world to your advantage. It might be scummy in some situations, but I mean, at the end of the day, you're a Shadow Priest. You're not built for dueling, so you have to make it work. Before we go any further with this video, guys, please make sure to check this brand new MMORPG mobile game out called World of Kings, which releases on the 30th of May. This game has over 20 plus classes to choose from, along with four races and amazing character creation, so you can make your character exactly how you like it, and has a bunch of dungeons with different difficulties and all kinds of boss fights that have unique mechanics that you need to watch out for. Each boss has its own backstory and serve unique skills and loot to keep you active. World of Kings even has PvP. You can queue for battlegrounds, arenas, and your stats in PvP combat are automatically balanced so you can have a fair player versus player experience without having to worry about gear. World of Kings also has cool pets, mounts, costumes, so if you're more of a laid back type of player that enjoys farming pets, this game has that for you. So if you're looking for the perfect mobile game to play, go ahead, check World of Kings out. I'll leave the download link in the description below. Smash that like button if you want to see some World of Kings videos on the channel and I'll speak to you guys later. Back to the video. Moving on to the tier 30 row, we have Body and Soul, Sand Lane, and Intangibility. 99% of the time, you're going to be taking Intangibility, it's just that good. Dispersion heals you for 50% of your HP over its duration, and its cooldown is reduced by 30 seconds. Sand Lane's a pretty decent talent, but the only time you're going to take Sand Lane is if you know for a fact that nobody is going to be going on you. And as a Shadow Priest in PvP, 99% of the time, you're the main target that everybody's going to be on. You do 3v3, everybody's going to be hitting you. That's why we take Intangibility. So very rarely, you're going to be taking Sun Lane. You're pretty much always default spec into intangibility, but it's not a bad thing because the talent's sick. The tier 45 row is pretty interesting. You've got Twist of Fate, Misery, and Dark Void. You'll literally never use Dark Void in your life. You're going to be choosing between Misery and Twist of Fate. Now, this is an interesting row. Twist of Fate is a really cool talent, but Misery gives you less globals. So, say in the opener, if you're opening with Psychic Horror, and then you're going to be casting Vampiric Touch into somebody, if you didn't have Misery, you'd have to cast Vampiric Touch, then you'd have to cast Shadowed Pain, and then they'd be out of the stun. With Psychic Horror and Misery, you can Psychic Horror into Vampiric Touch into Mind Control, or you can Psychic Horror Vampiric Touch into Shadow Mend, or Psychic Horror Vampiric Touch into Mind Blast. You're not having to waste all your globals casting Shadowed Pain constantly on the target every time, which can get really, really annoying. Misery just makes your life so much easier and so much better. For the tier 60 row, we have Last Words, Mind Bomb, and Psychic Horror. There's pretty much no point in talking about the other two talents. Psychic Horror is just far superior on this talent row, and it's a must for dueling. Please, if you're playing a Shadow Priest, stop taking Mind Bomb when dueling. It replaces Psychic Scream. So you're losing Psychic Scream, you're not getting a stun, you're getting an incapacitate. Okay. 
Okay, for the tier 75 rule, we have Auspicious Spirits and Shadow of Death. This is interesting because I see some Shadow Priests taking Auspicious Spirits and some take Shadow of Death. Me, myself, I take Death. It ends duels, it gets the job done, it ties in really well with your Void Form and keeping your Insanity up, which also helps get the kill because you can Void Bolt into Death, into Mind Blast, into Void Bolt, into Death. It just keeps your Insanity up so that you can end duels. Shadow of Crash, really cool, but it's doo doo. Does no damage, so we're not even going to talk about that. You're going to be choosing between Shadow of Death and Auspicious Spirits. Spirits. Auspicious Spirits did get nerfed pretty recently. It used to deal 100% and now it only deals 70%. So it's, it's taken a little bit of a nerf. Solid 30%. I'd say in Battlegrounds, if you're going for like insane top of the damage, maybe take Auspicious Spirits. If you're playing 3v3 and you know that you're going to just be casting and doing as much damage as possible and you're trying to spread the pressure, Auspicious Spirits again might be a good choice. But all in all, I always like to play Shadow of Death because when people get into that death range, two deaths and they're out. I like to get the job done. You'll see when you're playing with Auspicious Spirits, when people get into death range and you don't have a death button, it feels extremely hard to execute somebody without just doing mass amounts of pressure. So yeah, I always take Shadow of Death, especially in duels. Shadow of Death all the way. Okay, so for the tier 90, we have Lingering Insanity, Mindbender, and Void Torrent. I've always used Mindbender on this row. I've never really had to use Lingering Insanity or Void Torrent. Mindbender, in my opinion, is just far superior. You can use it in two different ways. You can use it at the start of a duel to gain insanity fast, or you can use it when you're bursting. To use it when you're bursting, get around six to 10 stacks of Void Form, then pop Mindbender. It's affected by the haste that you get from your Void Form. So get around six to 10 stacks, then pop Mindbender and just go ham. Or you can use it at the start of a duel early to get insanity fast so that when it comes to it you're gonna have void form ready you're gonna have vampiric embrace ready pop your vampiric embrace pop your void form and then you'll just be able to stay alive throughout the enemy's burst okay on the last row we have legacy of the void dark ascension and surrender to madness you're never ever gonna play surrender to madness so don't even think about this talent don't even look at it so legacy of the void and dark ascension most people say just play legacy of the void 100 of the time in pvp i disagree i do think there's some cases where Dark Ascension is better than Legacy of the Void. I'll admit though, I'd say about 89% of the time I play Legacy of the Void over Dark Ascension, but there is some cases where Dark Ascension is good. I'll give you an example. When you're dueling some people and if they're pretty decent, what they'll do is when you pop Void Form, they'll CC your Void Form. Void Form is like Shadow Priest Burst. So what they'll do is as soon as they see Void Form, they will try and CC it. They will either say if you're against the Rogue, they'll cloak it and then they'll vanish instantly. Like they won't want to take any damage from it at all. If you're playing against Warlocks, they'll try Fear it, they'll try Seduce it. If you're playing against Hunters, they'll Trap it. Pretty much any decent player will try and CC your Void Form for as long as they can so that you don't get any burst off on them. Mages will, will literally just blink away from it and just kite you for days because they can. So why wouldn't they? You know, it's it's your burst opportunity. They're going to run away from it. And what happens when people do this is you end up with no Void Form when they come back and then they get a full CC chain on you and then you've got no Void Form. So then when you pop Vampire Embrace, you don't avoid farm up, so you can't really get much healing from it. You might have your dots up, you might be able to cast Mind Blast and Mind, mind Flare, and then you don't get the full benefit of Vampiric Embrace. Because everybody knows when you pop Vampiric Embrace and then you pop Void Form and you've got full dots, you've got all your procs in the world, you just do mad damage and you heal to full HP. Or you stay at full HP through everyone's burst. So the times where I take Dark Ascension is if you're against a good player and they know how to lock you down when you're in Void Form, what you can do is you can just use your normal Void Form. If they lock it down, Cloak of Shadows, Blind it, Polymorph it, Fear it, run away from it. When they come back, to burst you then you have dark ascension ready you can pop your vampiric embers you can pop dark ascension and then you can just start over and just got absolutely fucking ham on them that's the only time i play dark ascension is when the player is actually decent and i need to try figure a way to beat them but like i said most of the time we play legacy of the void but that's just like an example of when you would play with dark ascension moving on to the pvp talent side of things we have gladiators medallion you're pretty much always going to want to take this in dueling we have greater feared which is just a must. Void Origins, which is a must. And we have Siphine, which is a must. Some people don't play Siphine though. Some people, instead of playing Siphine, play with Driven to Madness. I personally just love playing with Siphine. You can do some really cool things with it. And especially if the target doesn't kill it straight away, then they're just going to be slowed forever. Clutch Siphines, win duels. Moving on to openers for a Shadow Priest. So say we're dueling a caster right now. Your opener's going to go something like Psychic Horror into Vampiric Touch into Mind Blast, Siphine. Fiend Silence. That's the basic order for an opener. So let's do that here. Psychic Horror, Vampiric Touch into Mind Blast, into Siphine and Silence. 
that's your basic opener for a shadow priest obviously it's not as easy as that there's a lot of things to think about mages have stealth boomies have stealth warlocks have kick shamans have kick they have grounding totem there's a lot more factors that you have to think about so say we're against the mage right now i'm in a duel he's in stealth and he comes out of stealth casting polymorph i'm gonna insta stun him and then as soon as i've stunned him i'm gonna start casting vampiric touch but what you have to think about is if he trinkets that stun he's gonna want to use counter spell on you if he lands the counter spell it's bad news bears you really need to be thinking about this when you're versing anybody whether it's a mage a boomy a warlock a rep paladin a demon hunter a rogue a shaman anybody can do this it's a cheeky little move that people do in duels they trink it and then instantly kick you so you need to be ready for this so whenever you're starting the duel and you stun somebody you need to be ready for them to trink it if they don't trink it then you just carry on casting vampiric touch and go about your day but if you see them trink it you need to be ready to stop casting and silence them or if it's a rogue or any other melee you need to be ready to stop casting and then fear them if you manage to fake the kick and land the fear from there on you've got five seconds to do whatever you need to do so we have feared this guy we can shield ourselves. we can run away, we can wait till the fear gets towards the end of the duration, Vampiric Touch, into Mind Blast, into Siphene, Mind Bender, Void Form, and just go ham. But make sure when you're running away, you don't run in the same direction as where your Siphene is. Make sure you run to the side of it, so then he has to run to the Siphene and then run towards you. So here's a little example. If I was to fear this guy, he'd obviously be running backwards in that direction. So once he's feared, he would be running backwards. And then I siphon him and then I run to the side over here. So he's feared in this direction over here. My siphon's hitting him, slowing him down and I'm all the way over here. So if he wants to kill my siphon, he has to use a ranged ability on it or he has to run to the siphon and then he's got to run all the way over to me. You've got to make it as hard as possible for them to get to you. Doing little things like this makes it harder for them, which gives you more chance of winning the duel. If you were to fear him and then siphon and then just run straight back, He's got a clear line towards you. So he's got to run through Siphene anyway to get to you. So he'll just run through Siphene, hit the Siphene and then get to you. When melee see that your Siphene's placed like really far away from you, sometimes they don't bother hitting it. Sometimes they just waddle towards you, which gives you more time to do things like cast Vampiric Touch again, keep running away from them. So just make sure when you're placing Siphene, you think about where you're placing it and where you're about to run to, to make it hard for them. Okay, that's what you do against the melee. Getting back to what you do against a mage or any other caster as soon as you fake their kick you silence them then carry on casting vampire touch into mind blast siphene whatever you need to do and then just go from there what i sometimes like to do is when the silence is about to end i like to cast a mind control on them once they're mind controlled they're going to be mind controlled for seven seconds they don't have a trinket to get out of it and then you just let them sit inside the mind control and you basically laugh at them as they just take damage from your dots so what this is doing is just delaying time waiting for your cc to come back like your psychic horror and your silence waiting for for your siphon to come back and they're just taking damage from your dots because your dots do decent damage so it's a win-win and sometimes what i like to do is if i have them in a mind control i like to bring them towards me cancel the mind control and then fear them once they're feared for like three seconds I have time to cast Vampiric Touch again and then do whatever I need to do. Maybe purge them because mages always spell steal your buffs. They will spell steal Power Shield. They'll spell steal your stamina buff. Anything they can steal, they will steal. So make sure when you're dueling mages, you're constantly reapplying your buffs. Try not make it obvious though because if they see that you're doing it obviously, then they're just going to steal it. You got to do it sneaky. Okay, moving on to survivability for a Shadow Priest. We have Powered Shield, Shadow Mend. We have Fade. We have have vampiric embrace and dispersion with these spells rotated you can live for quite a while first of all though i'd like to say don't just spam powered shield whenever you can i think it's better to cast shadow mends i think it's better to restore raw hp than it is to just shield yourself especially if your shadow men crits it's going to be a really decent heal like 32 to 36k heal it is good to use powered shields but i'm just saying whenever you can try and prioritize shadow mends over powered shields vampiric embrace and dispersion always try and use vampiric embrace before you use this you also want to be combining Vampiric Embrace with Void Eruption to get the most out of it. If you Vampiric Embrace without using Void Eruption, you're not going to get a ton of healing. But if you Vampiric Embrace, then Void Eruption and just got ham with all your instant casts 
pump your maledic out there, your mind bender, you're going to get a ton of single target healing and you should be able to live through anybody's burst, anybody's at 100% HP. Moving on to stats for a Shadow Priest. So as you can see, I am trying to stack as much haste as possible. Some people say as soon as you get past 20% haste, that's more than enough for a Shadow Priest, which is probably right with the breaking points and everything with haste. So I'm currently saying at 22% and it actually feels really nice. I used to have 16% haste on my Shadow Priest and I used to have like a bunch of crit, which I never wanted. It's just how this game is at the moment with RNG. You can't exactly choose what gear you want. You're just, you just got to take what you can get until you get to a comfortable position where you can actually then start choosing because you've got that much gear. So on my Shadow Priest at the moment, I'm choosing to spec into haste. I'm sitting at 22% haste and now I'm trying to farm a little bit more crit because my crit's gone down a lot since I've started stacking haste. My crit used to be like 26, 27%, but I used to only have 16% haste. So for my Shadow Priest, it goes haste, crit, mastery. I don't really care for the versatility. I know I have 2% verse and 2% leech, but if I could, I'd rather have an extra 2% crit or an extra 2% haste. But as for gems, I'm fully haste gemmed up and I have two haste enchants. And on my weapon, I use quick navigation for the haste proc. And the haste proc is actually so good. Moving on to macros. Now I know there's probably a really easy way to type these macros out and I'm probably doing it a really, really complicated way, but this is just how I type my macros out and it's how I've done it for like years. So I'm just gonna stick with it, it works. So it's fine. Here is my leap of faith macro. Hashtag show leap of faith just for the tooltip. Slash stop casting whatever I'm casting. Slash target bracket at whoever I want to target. And then there's another bracket. Slash cast leap of faith underneath that. Basically what this macro does. Stops casting whatever I'm casting. Targets whoever I want it to target by typing their name in the macro. And then it leap of faith them towards me. Over here we have a psychic horror macro. Hashtag show psychic horror. Once again this is just for the tooltip winner. Hashtag show psychic horror. Once again this is just for the tooltip when I hover over the spell. Slash stop casting whatever I'm casting. Slash cast bracket target equals focus, comma, harm, comma, no dead bracket. Psychic horror, psychic horror. So what this macro does, it stuns my focus target, but it doesn't drop my current target. So I could be targeting the warrior and I could stun the paladin and it wouldn't drop my current target. This macro just makes it that little bit easier in arenas because you don't have to constantly be swapping targets and then reselecting your other target. It just makes it that a tiny bit easier in life. Over here we have a disperse macro. You don't actually need this disperse macro anymore because I think when you double click disperse it cancels it but this macro does have the slash stop casting at the start of it and I don't think your actual disperse spell if you press it, it will stop casting whatever you're casting. You'll have to cast it first. So this macro is just a slash stop casting, slash cast disperse, slash cancel or a disperse. And basically what that will do is if I press disperse again, it'll take me out of disperse. So I don't have to right click my debuff. But like I said, I think if you just double click disperse now, it'll instantly take you back out. But it doesn't have the stop casting part at the start of the macro. Over here, we have a focus silence macro, which is pretty much just the same as the psyche horror macro, but instead it's it says silence silence so this will just silence my focus target without dropping my current target just to make things that tad bit easier in arenas over here we just have a simple shield macro slash target whoever i want it to target and then it's slash cast power word shield just so i'm not having to click on my teammate and then press shield it just makes it that tad bit easier to do things in arena now i just want to say you don't actually need macros macros don't make you good Macros just make your life easier. I know multiple rank one people that don't use macros and it doesn't make them bad. Like they legit click their unit frames. Does that mean they're bad because they click unit frames? Question mark. There's some people out there that use arena one, two, three shield, arena one, two, three purge, arena one, two, three stun, arena one, two, three silence so many macros and it doesn't make you good anyways that's it for macros if you've got any more questions about macros go ahead post a comment down below okay i'm going to give you guys a quick rundown on how i duke as a shadow priest in jewels and in pvp in general i'm going to leave a link down in the description though to a proper guide by hanzo because i think his duking guide is actually fucking sick make sure to go check it out link in the description also if you've watched up until this point smash that like button really fucking helps me out but here's how i duke so say this mature swine is a rogue at the start of a duel i like to duke fast if he kicks me early then that kind of gives me a gauge onto how he's playing he might want to kick me early all duel and that's normally how they go if they kick early they kick early all duel long if they normally kick you at about 50 percent they normally just kick you at 50 percent throughout the whole duel that's just how it works for some reason i don't i don't i like literally some people outside juratar i know 100 how they kick and they never kick me 
because they never change the way they kick. It's it's dodgy. I don't know why they don't. I'd try insta kick people to be honest. Like I, I'm always insta kicking people if I can when I play a melee. But anyway, I start off fast like this, casting vampiric touches, and then stop casting. See if I get the kicks. If they don't kick me, then I'll cast just for a tiny bit longer. And if they're still not kicking me, I'll just cast even longer, even longer, get into about three quarters of the way through the cast, and I'll just keep duking like this. If they're not kicking me at all, they could just be a really fucking bad player and they don't know what kick is. So sometimes if you think it's a bad player, if you can tell it's a bad player, sometimes I'll just open with a full vampiric touch and not even bother fake casting. I'll just see if they kick me because sometimes, like I'd say about 60% of the time, they don't even kick because they're bad. So just remember that when you're dueling people new, they might be bad and they might not know what kick is. But yeah, that's my quick rundown on kick. I basically start off at 10% through the cast and I just work my way up through the cast until they kick and then it's an easy fake and then we can win the duel. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description to a proper duking guide. This video has just gone on for way too long and I'm quite tired now. So anyway, guys, smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh.